everybody! Welcome to International Women's Day! We only get one day, so let's make the most of it. Welcome to the men as well. But just know your place. My parents, you know, they actually came from Pakistan to Birmingham, so not much difference. In the 1970s, they were desperate to be British. My dad was called Mohammed, but he abbreviated it to Bob. <laughs> and my mum, she was called Sawa, but she called herself Sharon. John and Helen, who lived next door, they got really confused. So we abbreviated their names to Iqbal and Praveen. <laughs> you know, my mum was obsessed with the royal family. She went into the hairdressers once and asked for a Princess Diana haircut. She came out looking like one of the Queen's corgis. <laughs> They didn't really know what to do with Asian hair back then, you know. So what they did was they just permed it to death. I was a skinny little hairy Asian girl growing up in Birmingham in the 90s. I had a beard, moustache and sideburns. <laughs> I was like the Asian girl Freddie Mercury. <laughs> I tried everything, waxing, shaving, plucking, lawn mowing. <laughs> have you tried that, men? Have you, boys, have you tried that? <laughs> I tried to bleach my facial hair. Has anybody tried that? Have you bleached your facial hair? Asian women, we do it quite a lot. I tried it, but I had to stop because when I got in the lift under the lights, I looked like Father Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> As a child, I was always being told, you're a girl. You're a girl. And I had to behave in a certain way. My mum took me to the dentist once with crooked teeth. And she said to the dentist, my daughter needs her teeth straightened. She, it's really important. She's a girl. She has to look nice. Otherwise, she will never get a husband. <laughs> so it was okay for my brothers to go around looking like the local recycling bin. But... <laughs> From the age of nine, I had to look like Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Growing up, no one on TV looked like me. My dad used to say to me, hurry up, hurry up, get downstairs. Trevor is on the TV. Because Trevor MacDonald was the closest thing to an Asian woman at the time. <laughs> I grew up thinking I was a black man. <laughs> My parents wanted me to be something respectable, you know, like a, a, like a doctor, a doctor, <laughs> or a doctor. <laughs> I wanted to be a star. Well, that wasn't happening, was it? Women like me didn't tell jokes. The only time you saw women like me on TV was if they were baking cakes in a burqa or blowing things up. Well, being a comedian was always one step too far. An aunt once said to me, men don't like loud women. They like them thin and quiet, like a mouse on a diet. <laughs> I did it anyway. I arrived in comedy, me and a million white straight men. <laughs> At one of my first gigs, Dave, one of the comedians, he came up to me and he said, you won't be doing this for very long, will you? You've got to get married soon. You're nearly 20. As I became more well known, people got really confused. Once when I was walking along a beach in St Lucia in the Caribbean, a woman came up to me and she said, I know you, I know you. Are you my GP? <laughs> <laughs> then at Chicago Airport in America, somebody came up to me and they said, Oh, it's so great to meet you, Malala. <laughs> <laughs> I could only ever possibly be Mindy Kaling or Malala or Isis. <laughs> there were so few brown female role models that whenever I got mistaken for any of them, I was all of them. <laughs> I didn't look like any of them, of course. But growing up every week in Birmingham, my mum would oil all of our hair. We got oiled so much that the smell would linger in the school corridors long after I'd blown up the lab with sodium nitrate. <laughs> 
my white friends, they couldn't understand it. You know, why was my hair always greasy on a Monday morning? Has your mum cooked a fried breakfast on your head? <laughs> Did you fall into the frying pan? <laughs> Where on earth do you live? At the petrol station. <laughs> I've got lovely hair now. And they've got no hair. <laughs> Once I'd gate crashed the white male comedy party, I would get comments like, oh, you're only doing well because you're a woman. Oh, you're only on TV because you're Muslim. Oh, you're only getting opportunities because you're brown. Well, I thought this was ludicrous. It was crazy because no woman has ever done well in comedy because they're a woman. My success can only ever be boiled down to positive discrimination by my sex and gender, which is discrimination in itself. I was labelled a strong woman which was always a problem because it meant that I had a really big mouth. What does that mean anyway? Strong woman. Are there loads of women just going around being strong 24 hours a day? <laughs> Lifting cars, <laughs> chopping down trees, <laughs> hunting, killing men. Am I a cup of builder's tea? A Russian shop putter? Or the leader of Bangladesh? <laughs> We're all so strong. I mean, none of us really are able to break through the glass ceiling. When one of us does break through, there's loads of double glazing men on the other side going, don't worry, darling, we can fix that. <laughs> I once went for a meeting with a TV executive about comedy, okay? It was about comedy. And in the middle of the meeting, this man, he said to me, can you cook? I thought, my God, my mum sent him. <laughs> he's turned this into a date I was so taken aback I said yes he said what do you cook Muslim food <laughs> I thought Muslim food what's that curry kebabs halal fish and chips <laughs> I thought when have you ever heard anyone say do you fancy going out for a Muslim <laughs> But I never said anything because, you know, I was brought up to be a really good, subservient, obedient <coughs> Asian woman. So I just kept my mouth shut and I went home and made a new batch of chapatis. <laughs> <laughs> and I made sure they were round. <laughs> when I first started comedy, I was the only brown woman in Britain doing stand-up comedy. And I was never taken seriously, let alone break the glass ceiling. I was labelled a flash in the pan, something different, something exotic. <laughs> I'm not exotic, I'm from Birmingham. <laughs> no one really thought that I would last. Because for Asian women, the expectations across the board are pretty low. We have so many barriers to overcome. You know, apart from the moustache and the beard. <laughs> you know, we've got to overcome race, religion, parents, culture, expectations, acceptability, shame, honour. But humour trumps all of those things. Through this Root For Me campaign, I want other brown women coming through to get the same opportunities as all the other mediocre white men. <laughs> the thing with Asian women is, we're like fish really. You wait all day for the right catch and then ten come at once. <laughs> and they bring all their family and friends along with them. <laughs> I want to say to all the women across the globe today, Happy International Women's Day. From me, Shazia Mirza and all the Vatican Naturals team, I hope you have a great day. Good night.